I'm going to start a new track this morning. It's July the 14th, and we've been talking about discipline. Actually, this entire study, Follow the Faith, began as a discipleship training. Now, discipleship may sound like kind of a churchy word. It's not meant to be. It simply means studying or learning to be a student uh, when it deals with things like Bible and God then at that point in time it becomes theology the study of theos God and last week we finished dealing with the fact that discipline is discipleship you have to discipline, you have to practice, you have to prepare yourself mentally, physically, emotionally. Everything that you are, everything that defines you, you have to prepare that to seek out and search Almighty God and what He has done for you if you've been saved, what He can do for you if you have not been saved, and that's actually where we ended last week. The only natural when it comes to things of faith is it is natural for someone to go to Almighty God and say, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of my sins. Enter my life as my Lord and my Savior and show me how to be a Christian, a follower of Jesus Christ, a disciple, if you will, of Jesus Christ. And that follows a godly sorrow approach. And so at that exact moment, according to Scripture, at that exact moment, you have been born again. Jesus told Nicodemus in John chapter 3, you must be born of the Spirit. You must be born again. And so, growing in the Word and discipleship, becoming a disciple, a studier of Almighty God, requires a couple of things. Number one, most all, most important of all, is the desire to learn more about this new life that you have in Jesus Christ. We hear all kinds of things when people are talking, and, and come on, not all of the things that people say are anywhere close to accurate, much less biblical. So where can you go? I mean, some of these people that are saying some of these off-the-wall things are actually leaders in churches or denominations, and if they don't know, who does? Very simply, Scripture, the Word of God. God gave us His Word for the primary purpose of teaching us about Himself. That's the reason why He has protected and nourished His Word, if you will, so that we can go to that word and we can learn more about him. Now, beginning, okay, you're going to have to take somebody's word for it. But as you mature, let's say, as you grow from this new birth, from this little bitty baby growing up, as you grow, you should begin to question Sometimes things that are said correctly, sometimes things that are said incorrectly. You should question those things and you should go to God's Word to determine if what they say is accurate and true. So there are tools involved. Obviously, the Bible is a tool. It is the living Word of God. It's actually, if, if, you'll, if you're able to accept it, this is the embodiment of Jesus Christ that we can actually put our hands on touch, feel it today. When we want to hear the Word of Almighty God, 
we may not hear the voice, but all we've got to do is open the text, start reading, and those things that are most I'm not going to say most important, but what I am going to say is those things that God wants you to know, His Holy Spirit who dwells within you, if you have asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, the Holy Spirit of God dwells within you. And He's going to reveal it. That's part of His job. In the Gospel of John, it says the Holy Spirit is here to convict us of our sins to show us the path to righteousness and to teach us to counsel us so you need the word of god there's other things that are very helpful things that help you get around in the bible many bibles especially if you get some of the more expensive ones have in the very back of them a miniature a, a limited what we call a concordance it's not an index but what it is is you can look up a particular word usually that if you remember something you know i read something that said uh, new birth or salvation or it said this or that you can go back in the back of the Bible and you can look it up and many times what it'll do is it will show you part of the passage part of the verse that has the use of that specific word in it and you can find the verse for your own benefit as you grow in first responderville whether it's firemen, policemen, whether it's dispatch, whomever it is, in these situations, many times the tools that you use, the tools that you carry closest to you, you have to show proficiency to be able to carry those. And if you can accept what I'm saying, it's the same in your new Christian walk, in the walk of a disciple of Jesus Christ, you need to have proficiency in the use of Scripture because if you take something and read it and try and show something to somebody else that you read in the Bible, if you're taking it out of context, that means out of its original placement, you might actually be teaching or receiving something that is not true even though it's in scripture king david is credited with most all of the psalms and there's one psalm i believe it's psalm 52 could be 59 where he was writing this psalm after he had committed adultery with bathsheba after nathan had come he had realized his sin. He went to God in, in this psalm in prayer. And it says something to the effect of, In sin I was conceived. The truth is there. Yes, we are all conceived in sin. But if you don't understand, you might think, Oh, his mom was committing adultery when this happened or something of that nature. No. You've got to know the context as well. And you only get that through practice. You only get that through questioning. So the tools that I would recommend, just starting out, number one, this is a wireless society, a paperless pretty much society. And for you to use a smartphone, for you to use some of the other tools that are available. I have a Kindle, I'm of course doing this on an iPad. But I have an app that I like, and it's called Blue Letter Bible, BLB. There are many others that are out there. I like Blue Letter because, one, I know how to use it. I'm quick at it. But number two, it's got a full-blown concordance available. It's got what they call an interlinear, which means you can actually see the original Greek or Hebrew word, 
You can follow that. It's got other things called Treasury of Scripture Knowledge where it will take you to similar references and you can see how many different places in the entire Bible have a similar presentation of a particular truth. Because if the Bible tells you a truth once, it's going to have it more than once. And if it only has it once, then you need to question what your understanding of that message is. Because Scripture actually doesn't contradict itself. It repeats itself. It says things in so many different ways so that we can understand what the message is. So anyways, uh, Blue Letter Bible has also got uh, other translations, and that's the real challenge. I've studied a little bit of the original languages, and that isn't really helpful. Partially because both of them are dead languages, actually all three of them, if you consider Aramaic part of it. But if you can read Greek, if you can read Hebrew and Aramaic, even then you have to do the translation and the interpretation of a particular word. But you can go to Blue Letter Bible or some of these other Bibles that are applications, and they will give you several different choices like King James, New King James, American Standard, New American Standard, New, Amer New International Version. They, they've just got a plethora, if you will. In many different languages, you will have choices and options. And if you take a particular verse in the blue letter, you can actually choose that verse, say compare, and it will give you all of the different translations of that specific verse. So you can get an idea of different opinions of what that verse actually says. This is very helpful. Knowledge of where you're coming from, knowledge of where you're going is important. I know there's a lot of people that can tell you the date and the time and the whole bit of when they were saved. I actually couldn't until I was cleaning out my mom's stuff after she passed. And she actually kept a uh, announcement, a little sheet of paper basically that said, okay, I was baptized on a particular day. So that gave me a starting date. Many people can tell you that without the reminder. I'm, my brain doesn't work that way. But your self-reflection will get you a certain distance, but it will only get you so far. Your closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ is critical, and you're only going to get that through Bible study and growth. As you look back, hopefully you will feel regret and sorrow over your past, if you'll remember last week, it said godly sorrow leads to repentance. We need to have that godly sorrow. And we also need to have the challenge of, I don't want to do that again. And the only way to not do that again is the study of Scripture and learning more about this new life that we have in Christ so that we have a future and a hope. And we recently studied this hope. All of this is something that can be found out through the study of Scripture, through discipleship, if you will, and an intimate knowledge of God. Jesus cannot be just your Savior. He's got to also be your Lord. And He can't be just Lord without you wanting him as your savior. He's got to be both your Lord and your savior. And that is what's going to take time. That is what's going to take discipleship. That's what's going to take study, spiritual disciplines that we can get to. And hopefully, if you'll bear with me, I've been really tied up. I haven't got the last two videos posted. This is another video I'll be putting up on YouTube. But by all means, either like, 
share, comment if you have questions. I have an email, follow me, the number two, the way, at gmail.com. And on YouTube, please subscribe. Let me know you're there. And if you have questions, let me know those too. And I will do the best I can to show you scriptural foundation for not just my opinion, but for the stand that I take when God reveals it to me. So I'm going to go ahead and close this week. My time's up. God bless you. And Jesus loves you. So do I. Thank you for watching.